what were you solving for when the solution was steps? Is it what is the easiest way to burn calories without causing fatigue, easiest to adhere to, or how were you thinking about that problem that you ultimately landed on, on steps and walking? That's a really good question because one thing we got to ask ourselves is, and this kind of goes to a, a bit of a broader thing is like, what kind of daily life can I see myself living? I don't know, a decade from now or five years from now, a year from now, right? I can see myself doing a daily life where I'm, um, let's say, doing a bunch of CrossFit on top of some interval training on top of all the stuff that I'm that I'm doing and pushing myself and going, even doing a ton of outdoor activities. I just don't have the option for that. I'm living in a city in an apartment um, and I, I want to be able to, for example, multitask. I want to be able to read a book while at the same time doing an activity that's really healthy and, and, and you know, enjoyable for me. I'm also a very, you know, generally uh, a person that if I'm doing something, I'm extremely focused. And so that does create me uh, this area of, you could call it productive stress, where I'm like agitated to a point where I want to be super focused. But then I also need an area of my life where I can relax and chill out a little bit. Because if I don't find that balance, I'm going to burn out and I'm going to start hating my work. And I'm not going to be a fun person to be around um, for my friends, my family, my kids and all that stuff. So for me, um, when I kind of look back, like what I really enjoy, and, and it just really made, made it obvious, I just really enjoy taking a walk. And then I'm kind of thinking the box, you know, taking the boxes on that. Okay, how much walking do I really need to do? What's the benefits? If you look at the research, it sort of varies up until a point. I think about cutouts like 15,000 steps, you get these uh, really awesome benefits when you hit about 9, 10, 12K. Uh, people don't walk enough in general. Uh, now, I'm currently in Lisbon in Portugal. People walk here a lot more than some other cities, right? I've lived in cities where you know, we get... 1500 steps a day and, and everything else is done with a car so you just go to the supermarket with a car you go to the gym with a car you cook, drive back basically the only steps you take are around the house maybe take the garbage out and come back in right um and i've noticed when i moved around the world because i traveled the world a lot as digital nomad i live in 56 different countries wow. different apartments situations right I've noticed when I lived in locations that that i had an ecosystem around me that was everything was within 15 20 minutes walking I felt better. I was way more productive. I maintained my shape much easier. I was recovering faster between the gym. I was reading a lot more. Just the, all these things. And I looked back at what were some of the staple habits. And it ended up being like, okay, I'm walking to the gym and back. That's easy. Another 5,000 steps every single day, like without me trying to do anything, right? Um, taking a morning walk just around the park. I got a nice park here, five minutes away from my house. I just go do a morning walk. I'm reading for another 25 minutes. So every day I start a day with 20, 25 minutes reading. And I'm listening to an audiobook. It's the same thing. Actually, you retain information even better when you're walking compared to just sitting down and reading, at least for me personally. And then the other thing is like, uh, I want to talk to my parents regularly. When am I going to do that? Right? I, I do it when I'm walking. Right? I just call my dad up, call my mom, and I just alternate and have that system. So I can see myself doing this for the rest of my life. So if theoretically, not saying that's the case, but let's say hit delivered, you know, double the fat loss. Right? Like double the fat loss that I can get from, from walking exponentially better results. And you just have to do even half of it, just maybe four or five sessions a week for about an, like 20, 40 minutes or whatever. I'd still do walking because I already have the fat loss thing handled to some extent. And this is already good enough. So I don't need to do anything else when this satisfies a more of a holistic view of what life do I want to live when I'm taking a walk with my girlfriend, uh, taking a walk now with our daughter, taking a walk with friends, chatting about ideas, having fun. There's just something special about it. Now, I didn't initially kind of expand on all, all this, like the, the benefits, but then later on you dig in and you see all these famous philosophers, you see all these really, really smart people historically over hundreds of years talking about the benefits of taking a walk for creativity, all that stuff. You can add on a bunch of benefits. For me, it was very simple. I saw what worked in real life and I just doubled down on it, right? So there's a lot of power in just understanding retrospectively okay that's why i i had so many benefits back then so let me just replicate that and yeah some of those videos blew up and men's health and whatnot it's kind of funny that i became popular for walking even though that, that was one of those <laughs> things that I, I i would never consider when you tell someone to take a walk it's um like in my mind it's so mundane and so simple and so obvious but it, it did turn out that there's this entire niche on youtube of people that are like mind blown by the idea of taking more <laughs> steps which I mean, taking a walk is just a natural thing you do. I mean, it's just something that you're meant to do. So and anyways, it was, it was very interesting how that whole thing, whole thing evolved. 
Um, and I'm glad I inspired so many more people to become more active by all these fitness trackers, start getting it more quantified. And, and it's a pretty cool staple habit to have as a part of your life. Yeah. And I landed on the same staple habit as you. So when I was in California, I would walk to the bus and then go to work and walk all the time. And then when I moved back to Toronto, I had to kind of solve for the winter. Um, so then I thought, how do I solve for the winter? So I bought this walking pad, which I have at my desk. Nice. So I probably spend two hours a day just like when I'm answering emails and doing some kind of like non-deep work. I'll just walk. And that's an extra like 6,000 steps in the day just doing something with no extra time because I was going to answer those emails or do that work anyways. And if I'm walking at a slow speed, then it's just adding that to my life without taking away time. Exactly. Yeah, it's a very easy habit to bundle uh, with other habits. If you're watching TV, you can do a little bit of walking or a show or something like of that nature. I have my walking pad here in the corner, even though I thought I was going to use it a lot more. But Lisbon has amazing weather and it's never cold. And so I was um, just underestimating the, the, the weather here. <laughs> so I just got it anyway. But it's a backup plan. Still on a rainy day, I'm going to pull it out and, and we're good to go. So yeah, I, I just want to have a system where the friction for me to get my steps in anywhere between eight to 12,000 a day is sort of like where I try to be. I usually land around, let's say 9,000, 10,000 a day. 